Yeah, um, um, hello everyone. So uh, my name is Luo Mai. I am a researcher. Uh, I'm an, I am a researcher from Imperial College of London. So today I want to talk about a little bit about my uh, experience of using Mindspell for doing uh, distributed machine learning. So uh, first of all, I want to give you like a, just a little bit about myself. So um, I am a researcher working on building machine learning a system. I get my PhD from Imperial College and I will become uh, an assistant professor at, uh, at the University of uh, Edinburgh. So in my spare time, I often try to open source most of the system, the system that I built uh, on the uh, GitHub. So for example, like, like Kung Fu, it's a new distributed machine learning library that try to enable adaptiveness. So, uh, for, so for example, you can do, uh, elast you can do elastic uh, training by monitoring, uh, by monitoring your, G, your GPU utilization and also doing some other stuff like monitor the gradients to set the hyper, the hyper uh, parameters. And also like tensor layer is a very popular open source library. So basically I have like a very strong connection with the open source community. And today I want to talk about my view for using Mansball from the open source world. So, so uh, first of all, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the problem uh, the Mindspoke actually can uh, resolve. So today, as we know, people like uh, uh, are using TensorFlow and the PyTorch to develop many, many very big machine learning models like the graph neural network, reinforcement learning, and also the uh, and the, and also like the NLP models. So, for example, like the NLP model that that is just published by OpenAI. Uh, actually use like more than 1,000 GPUs to train like around uh, 130 billion of parameters, right? And the, and the most of the uh, improvement in the accuracy of the model uh, partially come from the increase of the size of the model. So basically it's actually very important to train the model using distributed machine learning system. And the people have been building like the horror role uh, or like a parameter servers or TensorFlow mesh to achieve distributed machine learning. Uh, but the major issue today is that these systems, they usually require you to configure many of its uh, options. So for example, their user need to decide how to partition the data and also how to synchronize uh, the uh, parallel GPUs you are using. If, you, the, if your model is actually very big, you also need to decide how to partition the model among these devices. So right now, the design principle is that the system needs to expose all this configuration to the user and then rely on the user to implement them. So this can be fine for an expert in the Google Brain team or the OpenAI team because they actually have a, like a very, very big cluster. They can they can really fine tune the configuration of their systems. But actually this has become very difficult for most of the, most of the developer from the open source community because usually uh, we don't have that many resources. So we don't have the time to really tune the configuration of the system. Uh, and in the end, so today, uh, if we look into the open source world, right? Today people are complaining that maintaining a distributed machine learning system actually is very expensive, right? And also uh, because all these configuration are usually hard coded as part of your TensorFlow program. So for example, the TensorFlow program can, can work very well for your high performance a cluster that with like a maybe uh, infinite band, uh, the DGX2 machines is, but then later on when you, re when you try to deploy the system into the cloud, Right, you really need to rethink about how you how you can reconfigure your system so that they can always give it like a very good performance. Right, so uh, so given this problem, I think the Mindspot actually give a very good opportunity to rethink how do we design distributed machine learning systems. So like TensorFlow and the PyTorch were designed at a time that people can actually fit most of their model into a single GPU. They want to train it. So basically the major requirement for TensorFlow and the PyTorch is that the people, they want to support the Python binding. You can write a high level Python uh, program. And then you rely on the AI framework to automatically offload your, the training to the GPUs. But, but like five years after TensorFlow and today, 
when the big model become the new norm, right? I think it's a good timing to rethink um, how do we uh, support uh, distributed training as part of the major functionality to be to be provided by the framework itself? Because because right now, if we are using TensorFlow, most of, of this functionality actually are implemented at the Python level. They rely on the user to write a Python program to, to do this. And that's why, I, uh, actually, I was starting to use a MySpo like two months ago. So I think the MySpo, actually, they are, exploring, uh, they are exploring a very good direction that they try to automate uh, some of the critical decision when people are doing distributed machine learning. So for example, in their system, they have a layer, it's called the auto parallel. So in this component, they have some cost model where they can monitor the device utilization and, and also try to measure some uh, features of the models. And the, based on the estimated cost, they have some uh, pool of some parallel, uh, parallel strategies, right? And based on the cost, they can do some dynamic programming to find some good parallel strategy. And then based on, the, based on the strategy, they actually can partition the graph and the round it on, uh, on, per, uh, on a parallel chips. So basically, I think this component provide like a many good opportunity for both uh, researchers as well as open source de uh, developers. So from the uh, researcher point of view, right, in this component, I can try to invent a lot of new cost model, like the parallel training, training, training strategy, right? And, and then my research, right, can automatically benefit all multiple users. So we don't really need to like, like write uh, like one single strategy, but later on the TensorFlow user and the Python user, they, fig they figure actually it's very difficult to incorporate my research into their daily work, right? But however, like Munspo as like a very young open AI framework, right? Uh, I think there's still a lot of things we need to do. So for example, uh, today, if we want to use like auto parallel, uh, we, we must use the uh, Huawei chips, uh, we, which we, uh, we can buy from their cloud. But however, the auto parallel hasn't been really implemented very well on the, on the, on the, on the GPU. Actually, uh, then we rely on like a, the community to contribute to better support for GPU and also CPUs. Yeah, so that's all the all the my current takeaway from a month ago.